Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. I hope that you're all doing well. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today I'm going to be talking all about LECA and kind of giving you guys an update on how my plants in LECA are doing. I have done a couple of LECA videos in the past of me kind of dabbling in it and I do have a couple more plants that I have transitioned to LECA so I think we're just going to do kind of a vlog style. I'm going to show you how they're doing, which ones I have in LECA and then I'm going to take you with me to flush them and just do the maintenance so yeah let's start off by taking a look at which plants I have in LECA I'm actually gonna take you to see them in the spots in which they currently live so you can see what type of conditions they get so let's go take a look okay so the first plant that I have in LECA which is the one that you probably know about if you have been um, on my channel for a while now and it is my Thai constellation so as you can see it lives here in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet so it's getting ample humidity and lighting from the grow light there. So I've been posting about this thing like crazy on Instagram lately and that is because as you can see it is giving me a new leaf which is like honestly the most exciting thing. So yes she is doing very well. She is pretty much due for some new water. It's almost completely dried out so I figured this would be a good time to do this video. So that is the first one and the plant that I have in had in LECA for the longest. Now the reason I even tried out LECA at all and kind of got into it is because this Thai constellation Monstera has had so many issues with root rot. I think it rotted about three times and everybody was screaming at me to put it into LECA so that's what I did. I honestly didn't really know what I was doing. I remember thinking like I don't even care if this plant dies because I was just so over it rotting so much um, and I wasn't really expecting, you know, I wasn't really expecting good results from the LECA because it was my first time transitioning a plant to LECA but I did it and the plant ended up doing really well. I feel like I kind of got lucky there because I have had a lot of transitions to LECA that have not gone well. But yeah, she's honestly in here living her best life now. I am kind of like wondering about transitioning plants from LECA to soil because eventually I would like to have her back in like a regular potting mix. So, but I don't really see a lot of information about that. You know, you see a lot of um, videos and information out there about transitioning plants from soil to LECA, but I don't really see it the reverse. So if anyone has any information or resources on that, okay, let's go check out my other plants. Okay, so we are now in my bedroom. I have a few plants in here with a grow light there, and one of them is this Raphidophora tetrasperma cutting that I put in Lekka probably a couple of months ago now. And I am just looking at it, and do you see that? It looks like we have a bit of a mold situation here. Um... Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, well, this is why we flush our LECA. It doesn't seem to be hurting the plant. Like, it still has a growth point here and, um, you know, looks to be doing fine. So, it's probably harmless, but, um, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, rinse it off anyways. But this plant has been doing quite well here. I actually have had a lot of issues with my Raphidophora tetrasperma rotting as well. It rotted completely on me twice. And I have a video like from quite a while ago when I first started making like planty themed videos. Um, I have a video of me talking about my, this plant and repotting it and talking about the rot and whatnot. So I'll link it if you want to watch it. But this plant used to be like a huge full plant that I actually got in Seattle. And um, now uh, basically I just have two cuttings left of it. So one is in LECA, one is in potting mix. Um, I decided just to give LECA a go since I was having a lot of rot problems with it. And it's actually, you know, really taken to it. You can see the roots there. So I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, now we are going into the plant room. I think I only have two more plants in LECA. I don't have a whole lot in LECA. Um, I honestly have not had good luck with it. Like I've probably had three LECA fails and one of them was my alocasia black velvet, which I was not happy about at all. Um, anyways, let's um, check out the next plant. Okay, so here under my Mars Hydra grow light, this is on the top shelf, so it's getting a lot of light. This is my Monstera adansonii. This is a cutting that I took off of my mother plant. 
and I was just curious about trying out Lekka for this plant. So yeah, that's what I did. And it's actually really happy in there as well. It has good roots. We will take a look at that when we flush it out. But it's just recently given me that little leaf and then it has another one coming out there. So I'm pretty stoked that this plant is doing well. This is the pot that my Monstera Thai constellation used to be in. But now it's too big for that one. So <laughs> it lives in a Tupperware and this guy gets the pretty pot. So it's honestly such a good feeling when my plants do take to Lekka just because I haven't always had good luck. And then the last plant that I have in Lekka is actually a cutting from my Marble Queen Pothos. And I actually rooted it in Lekka because I wanted to try that out. Oh, look at the algae. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but there's like algae because it's in this glass. This like really, really, really needs to be repotted. It looks kind of gross, but it's just algae, so don't worry. Um, but yes, it's got so many roots. I honestly am probably just going to give this away because I have so many Marble Queen cuttings, you guys. Like... What's a girl supposed to do? But it's putting out the prettiest leaves because it's under the grow light as well. Um, but yeah, this one's literally just in a glass container. So I just dump it out, dump the water out through the top when I flush it. Um, yeah, I'm very lazy about this one because I was honestly just throwing it in there and kind of hoping to ignore it. But that needs to find a new home soon because yeah, it just needs more attention, you know? Okay, so before we go on to the maintenance vlog portion of the video, I thought I would just answer some frequently asked questions that I get about Lekka. I am by no means an expert, you guys. There are a lot of other um, plant hobbyists that are really into Lekka and share a lot of valuable information on their channels, but I am not one of them. I'm not a huge Lekka person. I definitely prefer just like regular potting mix. However, there are some benefits to Lekka. And I will tell you some things that I really like about it. Um, and probably the biggest thing is that once your plant has successfully transitioned and is successfully living in Lekka, the maintenance is so easy. Like I can honestly just forget about my Lekka plants for weeks on end. Um, I don't have to worry about, you know, checking soil, watering them. The water stays in the reservoir for weeks. Um, so I think that it's a really good option for people who travel a lot or are just looking for something that's really low maintenance. So that's really nice. Another thing is that allegedly um, you are less likely to get pests with Lekka and I have not had any pests on any of my plants in Lekka. So perhaps that is true, I guess because they don't have any soil to live in. Um, so that's definitely a huge benefit in my books because I hate pests. So those are definitely two. Oh, and another bonus is that you can see the roots. I really love that. I don't have to wonder, are the roots rotting? Are something going on with the roots? Especially because I typically put my plants that are prone to root rot in Lekka. So that's just like really awesome. I love that. Um, yeah, so those are the things that I really like about it. Super easy, low maintenance once you get it going. And as for the cons, the biggest con that I have, well, I feel like this isn't a con, but it's something that I'm apprehensive about, like, and maybe this is just because I've seen people comment this before, um, but I've seen people say that plants can't grow successfully, like, to, like, their full maturity in Lekka, um, like, they need soil, they need the nutrients in soil, blah, 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 and I don't know if that's true or not, but it is, like, in my brain. Like, I'm like, mm, like, should I be getting my Thai constellation out of this, like, as fast as I can or or what? But um, but then I've also seen a lot of people that have mature plants in Lekka and are super successful with it and have had plants in Lekka for years. So, yeah, I think it's also kind of like a relatively newer plant trend. So I guess we'll see, like, in a couple of years how everybody's plants are doing in Lekka. But anyways, that's not really a con. That's just, like, something that's in my brain. Um, but my my con for Lekka is, well, first of all, how I've had some fails with it. It's not, like, I don't usually fail potting my plants into potting mix, but I have definitely had a much more higher percentage of fails with Lekka. And my second con with it is how often you have to repot. Like, I... From what I've heard is that you're not supposed to have the roots like submerged in the water part at all times and mine are pretty much like that because my roots just grow like straight down to the water and I would be repotting honestly like every month if I wanted them to not be touching the water so my plants in Lekka the roots are submerged in water and I haven't had any like ill effects from that 
Um, so I'm really curious to hear if you guys grow your plants in LECA, do you let the roots submerge in water or are you repotting so that there's a layer of LECA underneath or how do you mitigate that? What do you do? Because this is a concern that I also have with my Thai constellation is I'm like, I can't just keep repotting it forever into these huge pots like every couple of months like it's just not gonna work for me so so let me know if you know the answer to that because i've already repotted my thai constellation a couple of times and i'm just wondering like is it detrimental that the roots are in the water i don't know um i'm sure a lot of you know a lot more about leka than i do so definitely hit me up okay now for some common questions that i get about leka um i have people ask all the time just like what is it they're new to it and I would definitely suggest for you to do your own research online or maybe check out some different vid YouTube videos. You know, if you type LECA for beginners or something like that into YouTube, then I'm sure that some great videos will come up. But in basic terms, LECA is basically a substrate that is just clay pebbles. I believe it stands for lightweight expanded clay aggregate, I believe. And it's basically like a porous clay pebble that can be used in a semi-hydro setup. So basically our plants are potted in these clay pebbles and then you fill up a reservoir a little bit of the way and then the clay pebbles are able to draw water up from that and supply it to your plant. So that way your plant is getting the water it needs, um, but it's also getting oxygen because there's air between the clay pebbles and that's basically how it grows. Now your plants do not get nutrients from the clay pebbles because they do not contain any. So we need to add nutrients, which I will show you the nutrients the nutrients that I use, um, but we need to mix that into the water so that our plants are also getting the nutrition they need. Now that brings me to another question, which is do you have to use nutrients? And I would say basically yes. Like if you plan on keeping your plants in LECA for any amount of time, that's more than like a couple of months, I would say that yes, you're probably gonna wanna give your plant nutrients. And another question that I get is do I pH balance my water? And no, I do not. Um, I've on I honestly have no idea what the pH of my water is, but I'm guessing it's okay because my plants are surviving. And we also have really high quality tap water where I live, which I'm really um, fortunate to have. But yeah, I have never ventured into the pHing my water zone. I'd be interested to do that in the future. Maybe I'll um, try it out and then update you guys. It'd be an interesting like experiment just to see. And I'm trying to think of what other questions I get. Hi guys, I just remembered another frequently asked question, so I'm just gonna edit this into this part of the video. And the question is, what brand or what type of LECA do I use? And the one I use is by Brocky Tony. It looks like this. I actually picked up this LECA from my local um, plant store. So um, if I can find it, a link online, I will leave it down below. But I had been, I had picked it up there and I had been using it and then Brocky Tony actually reached out to me and sent me some more. So um, yeah, it's the only one that I have tried and it's just, you know, what I've been using since I first started out. And it actually comes in a lot of fun colors. I think people notice that and that's why they ask me what kind of LECA I use because I have LECA that's like pink and fun colors like that. So yes, I think they're actually a German brand but sold worldwide maybe? I don't know, I bought it locally here in Canada so I will link it down below if, <laughs> if I can find it online for you. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. I would love to chat with you. Just remember, I'm not an expert here. This is just, just based on my experience, which is minimal. As for how often I do this whole flushing thing, I usually do it like once a month. Not sure if I should be doing it more or less, but honestly, once I notice that the water is like almost gone, then that's when I will do it. Or when I notice something on the pebbles, on the, the pebbles, the LECA, like we just saw the mold on the Raphidophora tetrasperma, then I'm like, okay, time for a flush. Because sometimes there is a mineral buildup that I can see. And that kind of lets me know, you know, we need to freshen things up. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this sit down portion. Now I'm just going to go ahead and we will do some plant care.
Okay guys, so the first thing that I'm going to do is mix up my nutrient water. Now, the brand of nutrients that I use is by General Hydroponics, and I got this on Amazon. I'll link it down below. Um, honestly, I just picked this one because I saw a lot of people using it and saying good things, and I also have good things to say. I really like it. Um, after I started using this is when my Monstera type constellation started growing, so yeah, I think that it works really well. When I did first transition my plants to LECA, I was just using Super Thrive and that was good for like a temporary thing. I know some people just use Super Thrive, I think, but I, I think this is like a more complete, you know, nutrient system. So this is what I use. And it has really specific instructions. So you just have to follow what it says on the back. Like for example, you have to mix this one with water first and then add the other two. Um, so yeah, if you get this, you know, obviously just follow the instructions and you only need the tiniest amount. Like I have these huge bottles that I've been using since September and that's how much is gone. Like they're basically still full. So yeah. And another thing, sorry, I'm like crouching. Um, I do not, oh my god, so loud. I do not use nutrients every single time I change the water and do a flush. I probably use them like every second time or if the plant's not actively growing, then I just won't bother adding any. So I just kind of like gauge it on the plant's growth or just like what I think. So, cause I don't want to over fertilize, but yeah. Usually about every second time I uh, mix up this nutrient water for them. Okay, so now our nutrient water is all ready, so we can just go ahead and flush out the LECA. So literally all I do is rinse water through it and yeah, just rinse it out basically. I decided that for the pothos, I think I'm gonna repot it because this is just pretty gnar with all of the algae. So yeah, I'm just gonna take it completely out of here and we can put it in a bigger glass container probably. Okay, so I'm gonna be adding some new LECA to the jar. So I have my brand new bag of LECA here. Now, when you first use LECA, you do need to rinse it a couple of times. And since there is a lot of clay dust, it's not great to wash it down your drain because there's a risk of clogging it. So I always just rinse it into a pot and then dump the pot of water outside. Or in the summertime, I rinse it with a hose outside. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna rinse this and then we can um, pot up our little guy in the jar. I think I might actually cut it and pot the cutting in here too. Then we can have a fuller plant. So we'll see. Let's get our LECA all rinsed off.
Okay, our Lekka is all good to go. I'm just gonna add some to our jar. I'm just gonna take a little cutting of this guy quickly. Let's go here maybe. Gonna remove this bottom leaf. And then I can stick them both into the jar. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. And basically all I have left to do now is just add the nutrient water. So I'm just gonna fill it up about a third of the way to about there. That should be lots. So this guy is all good to go. I'm sure that he's gonna be much happier in this new container. Yeah, but I wasn't planning on repotting it, but I guess that works out well for this video. So that's that. Now that's kind of uh, what I consider my like lazy way of doing LECA, just putting it in the jar there. Um, but what I like to do is keep the plants in the um, clear orchid pots or a different type of mesh pot like you see for my other ones. And then having it in a water reservoir here, it's just kind of easier to flush them out and care for them. And we weren't getting like the algae situation that was happening in there. But yes, these ones are very easy to flush. I'm going to flush both of these right now. Oh, by the way, I'm doing my Kai, my Kai, my Kai constellation. My Thai constellation last because it's coming out of the cabinet and there is some sort of mites in the cabinet. As some of you guys know, but I don't want to risk anything, so I'm just going to do that one last. Okay, so that's it. I literally just rinse them out and then put them back into their re reservoirs and again fill the water up to about a third of the way. And as you can see, that mold just like rinsed right off and it looks a lot better, so that's good. I think I actually might put this guy in the plant room instead of the bedroom because I think a reason it got that mold is because the bedroom. Um, I don't typically have the heat on in there, so I think it might be because it's a little bit too cold. Um, cool and damp, so yeah, I think I'll move it to the plant room and we'll see how that goes. Okay guys, so now it is this beauty's turn right here. Let's just admire her for a moment. My goodness, new leaf coming, so nice. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna rinse her out. I like to rinse the leaves too, just, you know, while I'm at it. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, you guys. I repotted her, I kid you not, like probably less than two months ago. And her roots are already, oh, you can't even see, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was holding it too high. And her roots are already growing out the bottom. Like they're all through the bottom. 
which is not, you know, not what I would exactly like. Oops, I broke a little piece off. I'm gonna stop touching them now. Um, yeah, so like, what the heck? <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna set her down, rinse her bowl out. I know I need a better water reservoir, a better pot for her. She's been in this plastic bowl for a long time now. I honestly just like never go anywhere. And I'm also picky with like plastic, like cash pots. It's, I don't know. I just don't usually like them, so. I, what I should do is line terracotta with plastic so that um, she can have the terracotta look, you know? <clears throat> I'm gonna dry this actually. All right, same thing. I'm just gonna put her in, fill up the water, and boom, that's it. So you can see how this is super quick to maintain, and then it's good for like literally weeks, you guys. Obviously the repotting, like for the pothos, took some time, and it is a little annoying to have to like, you know, rinse the leka and get new leka ready, but once they're repotted, they're good to go for quite a while, so very easy. All right, so that is it. All of the leka plants have now been maintained. Okay guys, that's gonna be it. Hopefully this video was somewhat helpful or entertaining or relaxing to watch. That's basically all I do for my Leka plants and that's basically all I, my camera always seems like it's zoomed in. Oh, cause it is, okay. Um, yes, that's basically all I do for my Leka plants slash all I know. Again, I'm not an expert, but if you have any questions or comments, I would love to chat with you in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you are not and I do make bonus content on Patreon if you're interested in that I will leave the link down below. I appreciate you all so so much for supporting my channel and supporting me in general I will see you in the next one. Bye